Um, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Says, thanks for all the work you've done. I just became aware of your site and have been frantically downloading and viewing all of your past shows all weekend. That's where all that <laughs> what a weekend. Is going. See? They've been quite helpful. <laughs> I was curious if you have any plans on doing a show on how to set up a home web server, which may include FTP functionality and perhaps some services like a forum, a blog. The show is on Joomla blog, but maybe a bigger integration of that into a home web server and whatever else might be interesting. And um, let me see, Matt also says, I've also wanted to set up a home web server since my family is a bit spread out and I would enjoy being able to have a central point for the entire family to come together. Okay. So there's a few things there, Matt. I'm going to pull up your email just so I can refer back just because there's quite a, few, mm -hmm. quite a few points that you're looking for. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind knowing, well, there's a couple things that we have to consider when you talk about setting up a home web server. The first thing is, it depends on how involved you want to get on setting this up, because there's a lot of services out there, like you look at services like DreamHost that provide uh, web hosting for, you know, five bucks a month, and you're able to uh, host your website for that, that much money, and it just gives you access to everything, and it's all hosted, and then you can point like a .com. So if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to get a .com for your family to go to, then you know, it's easy enough to do that. Once you start hosting it at home, then you have to start looking at the fact that if you're on DSL or cable, your IP address changes every time you reconnect to the internet. So if, you're, if your family members are connecting to that web server through an IP address, you have to let them know every time that IP address changes. Uh, on the other hand, you can pay extra to your ISP to get a static IP address, but that probably is going to cost you more than getting shared hosting with, uh, with uh, a company that just that does that uh, full time. So that's, you know, that's something for you to consider. If you do feel that it's advantageous for you to set up a home server, then you, what you're going to need is uh, various applications to, to run it for you. If you are running Linux, you know, I'd really like to know more about what kind of box you want to set up. Like, do mm -hmm. you have a computer that you're going to be dedicating to this? Because it's got to be running all the time, right? Uh, or are you planning just to run this on your own computer? Or what's, what's the plan there? Ideally, if you had a Linux server, that's going to be the most affordable way to do it. Like, and by Linux server, I just mean any old computer that will be able to run Linux. Uh, you can download Ubuntu Server Edition uh, from Ubuntu.com. That's going to allow you during the install process to install what's called LAMP, and that's uh, Linux. Apache. Apache is the server that allows you to do like HTTP colon and then actually load a website through a browser. So that's Apache. Uh, and then uh, MySQL, that's what you're going to need for databasing. And the P stands for PHP. That's a programming language that you're able to use uh, when creating websites. So, uh, so that's, that's an easy way to get the LAMP stack, but there are other ways as well to get that uh, in an Ubuntu system. There there's, are ways to get it in your Windows system. But then, of course, if you've got a Windows server, you've got to deal with, you've got to you know, be, be aware of the fact that you can get viruses and things. So you obviously have to have protection, and that's important. Um, so that's where, again, it's, it's nice to have a dedicated Linux box because you can basically set it up and let it go. Once you've got that running, uh, you can install a program. Uh, I use ProFTPD, which you can install just from the repositories. If you're using the, the server version of Ubuntu, you would just go sudo apt-get install ProFTPD, and it's all one word, and that gives you FTP access to to the server. And then there's a couple of little setups and stuff that you need to do. But as far as actually doing a demonstration on the show, uh, if you want to let me know a little bit more about what you're trying to do uh, specifically and what hardware you have to do it on, then I'd be more than happy to try to emulate kind of a, a similar setup and, and go through uh, as many of the things that you may encounter in that process and, and try to emulate that for you on the show in such a way that you know it helps you and it helps others to uh, to create a server at home, but essentially that will get you started. Workhouse says, I sometimes host images on my computer and just put it on port 81 or something and add that to the links. So you just have Apache installed on your computer kind of thing? Yeah. So, yeah, it's not, it's not very complicated, especially if you're, like if you have an Ubuntu desktop that you have running all the time, you can just install PHP 5 from the repository and that will automatically install uh, PHP as well as Apache because the PHP needs a, a web server, so it'll it'll get that all running for you and make it work. So, but then you don't have MySQL for databasing, so you need to set that up as well. But hmm. so all different ways to do it. So let me know a little bit more about your situation, Matt, and I'll be happy to walk you through it for sure.